Ali, we're initially talking about inflation figures, but let's just maybe just part that to one side for now, because I want to talk to you a little bit about the strikes. Yeah. We were talking about that before we got cut off, so take it away. So, it strikes me, no pun intended, that there's definitely a battle for hearts and minds going on mm. here. I think the Conservative Party is calculating that public patience will end quite... or certainly be severely dented and yeah. tested over the coming weeks. I think... They're banking that a lot of voters will think the timing of these strikes, while people back people's, you know, the Labour's right to withdraw in order to protect their conditions, of course, the alternative is the Victorian well, workhouse, yeah. right? I think the Tories are hoping that voters in sort of middle England, if you like, will think to do this at Christmas, particularly when we've had two COVID um, blighted Christmases, First Christmas without COVID, people trying to get to their families, wanting to have a normal, decent Christmas, particularly after the tough year we've had in terms yeah. of the cost of living. They will think that the unions may lose public support. And so they're hoping that these strikes will uh, have a backlash on the Labour Party because, of course, the Labour Party is partly funded by the trade mm. unions to the tunes of millions of pounds. That's what Richard Sunak keeps saying, isn't it? Your paymasters, yeah, your paymasters. that's right, that's right. Labour are hoping that just the general chaos and the general breakdown will mean everybody, you know, knee-jerk mm. blames the government. I'd say at the moment it's in the balance. Yeah. I really do think that. I think there's a tremendous amount at stake here, not just, you know, the economy over the next month, not just people's, you know, state of mind and mental health, frankly, and the inconvenience to businesses, firms and indeed families over Christmas. I think it's in the balance which way this goes. Because, Patrick, it's 20, 30, 40 years since the country's experienced industrial action on this scale. And it could get a lot worse. Look, we're no, we're, this isn't as bad as the winter of discontent in 1979. As we were saying the yeah. other day, in 1979, 31 million working days were lost through strikes, right? the labour of 31 million um, uh, days. Uh, now we're at about a million and a half in six months. Mm. So it's a lot less, an order of magnitude. Yeah. But I do think there are very, very serious political conditions here. And it's interesting the way Labour's playing it. The main people on the Labour front bench, so Rachel Reeve, Shadow Chancellor, Keir Starmer, they've got get around the negotiating ta table. Of course, we back uh, the trade unions, right to strike and all the rest of it. Wes Streeting, who's the health secretary, mm. he's he's sounding a bit more like a sort of young proto Tony Blair. He's painting himself as the patient's champion rather than the champion of the doctors and the nurses. Well, this is it. And that is a change. Well, it is a change, but it's also actually quite smart. And it's something that I was thinking about because, frankly, there are more people, as big as an employer as the NHS is, mm. there are more people who use the NHS yeah. than people it employs. Yeah. And so if you position yourself on the side of the patients, you could argue that that is actually quite shrewd politics. But I just wonder, Liam, you know, we started out with hearing about the rail strikes. OK, yeah. fine. Then it became nurses and then we've got posts. And we've had a few from... months of all off force. rail strikes, of course. Uh, exactly yeah. that. And we've had nurses, we've had posties, we've had border force. I mean, apparently driving instructors went on strike at one point, but I mean, I don't think many people cared too much about that. But yes. And now I'm wondering whether or not it can be looked at through the prism of just the unions as opposed to the individuals. They've almost saturated the strike market. And that makes it easier for the Conservatives because they can easily just go, well, actually, we're not going to negotiate with any of them. And when people start to see the economy, which is already by many people's metrics in the toilet, or potentially about to be anyway, People go, well, actually, we don't want to just give in to the unions. We can see that they're costing our economy money. And if the Tories outlast them, mm. then actually they win. Look, in no doubt, Sunak's already indicated, the Prime Minister, he's going to introduce legislation in the new year that makes it mm. harder to strike. At the moment, after the Tory reforms of the, of the 80s and then subsequently, a trade union needs at least 50% of its m members to turn out in a strike ballot. And then of those who turn out, 50% plus mm. one, need to vote for the strike. Otherwise, the strike is illegal. OK? I think Sunak's going to raise the bar. He's going to make it harder for trade unions to strike. But he does have to strike a balance because most people in the British economy, mm. most voters, almost all voters, they have to respect a trade union's right to strike, yeah. right? They organise labour is a very noble cause, right? The, without organised labour... You, the, the economy living standards can but very, it's, very it, But it's if it starts to look like a Mick Lynch vanity project that, as opposed that, to that, the But even stuff. within the rail unions, even it's the, the trade union landscape is very mixed and varied in this country. Mm. Even within the rail unions, the RMT is yeah. the most hard line. You've got the TSSA, which is a lot more moderate. Unite, there's, I'm hearing that Unite have actually accepted the pay deal 
on for their, yeah. their rail workers at the moment. I'm not sure that's confirmed, but even if they do, because the RMT guys... Uh, there are lots of them in network rail, which underpins the service, the tracks. Okay. We'll still have this strike action. But, right, you know, the teaching unions are very mixed. Mm. There's, a, there's, a, there's a lot of shades of grey here, and it's going to dominate politics and it economics is. for the next, and, at least the next six months. And there is a risk, there is a risk of the likes of Mick Lynch becoming isolated just for that very reason, Liam. Thank you very much. Liam Halligan, our economics and business editor.